Hi guys, welcome to Book Time. My name is Julia. I'm here again with Harry to do an unhaul video because I just spent many hours on Tuesday with my cousin Lucy reorganizing my main bookshelf, which contains uh, most of my fiction and uh, non-fiction stuff, for, like reading for pleasure books, I guess, as opposed to my uni stuff and everything. So we did that, but I had to make a lot more room on the shelves to fit in all the books that I had accrued over the past couple of years. So um, I, in the process of reorganizing, I chose a whole lot of books to give away. And hopefully I fit this into one video. I might split it into two because there's a lot of books here that I am going to unhaul. And I'm really proud of myself for letting go of some of these books. Um, the reason I'm giving these books away and I'll probably donate them to a secondhand bookstore. It's not because I don't like, like a lot of them I haven't read. A lot of them, some of them I just didn't like, so I'm not going to read them again. Or it's books that I did like that I know that I won't read again. Or books that I liked that I think, you know, are wasted sitting on my shelf and will be better off being read by someone else and appreciated by them. So in no particular order, I'm just going to go through what I've got. The first one is one of Miranda Hart's books. Um, is it just me? I actually read half of one of her other books. I can't remember what it's called. It's the one about her dog. And I really liked the start of it. I thought it was really funny about what it means to be a pet owner and stuff. But I didn't actually love the rest of it. So I'm probably... I mean, I love Miranda. I love her on TV and doing her comedy stuff. But I didn't love the book. So I'm going to give this one away, even though I haven't read it. The next one is... Whoop. Um... Yours truly, women of letters. <laughs> so much cat fur on everything I own. Um, women of letters is a, an event run by, who's it run by? Marika Hardy and Michaela Maguire, who are two Australian writers and sort of personalities. Like they're both quite well known. So women of letters is when a whole bunch of women, normally writers, but they could be other people doing things in the pub, usually in the public sphere. And they write a letter to anyone they want it could be to themselves or to an ex or to their parents or to a baby or friend anything um, but it's sort of about expressing themselves so it's this is a collection like a printed version of letters that were read out at some of these events um, and there's a few of these books out now because the events are really popular and oh Hamish Blake is even in here okay so it's not just women there's guys in here as well Frank Woodley Bob Brown Maybe I will keep this and read it because Zoe Foster Blake, Sarah, B like literally everyone on this list I like. So actually not unhauling this, going to keep it and read it. The only reason I was going to give it away was not because I thought I wouldn't like it. It's just I haven't got around to reading it and I know I can always borrow it from the library or get it on my Kindle cheaply rather than having a hard copy book taking up space on my shelf. But maybe I'll read it and then give it away. Okay, the next one is Seal Skin by Sue Bristow. I talked about this in my recent, my most recent wrap-up video, which I'll link down below. I did not like this. I gave it one star for terrible gender politics. So without going into it, that one's going away. The next two, uh, I don't need to talk about that much. It's The Silkworm and Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith. I actually love these books. Um, and every time they come out I read them on my Kindle and but I saw these at a second-hand store and thought oh maybe I'll buy all the hard copies because I like them so much but and I'll reread them in hard copy but I've never reread them I don't need to have the hard copies because I read them on my Kindle and now that Lethal White's out with a different cover like the sort of TV based cover and it's a lot prettier than these ones I'd rather if I ever get the hard copies I'd rather have a matching set so these probably cost me a dollar each I don't need them on my shelf um, the next three, well, one is The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. So much cat hair. Um, which I've probably, I don't even know, I've probably had this for like 15 years, never read it. I might read it one day, but again, I can get it on my Kindle <clears throat> probably for free or from the library for free. Like I don't need it taking up space on my shelves because I've had it for so long. I also got this second hand, so, um, I don't. 
but it was 50 cents apparently so it's no skin off my nose to give this away if anyone's read this let me know how it is because i would like to get to it one day um but that day has not been for over a decade so it's going um same with the next two which are louis l'amour cowboy novels my um I bought these because my PhD, part of my PhD is about cowboys, and the, well, a lot of it's about the American West. So I have read a lot of cowboy novels, um, but I don't need to keep these. Like, Louis L'Amour novels take up like half the shelves at every <laughs> secondhand bookstore, so I'll never be in short supply if I need them again. And they're all on the internet for free, and they're all basically the same story anyway, so I don't need to keep those. Um, the next one is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I actually really like this book, but I have another edition um, that I got from a friend that's like one of the cloth bound, I think it's the Penguin Pretty cloth bound edition. So I've kept that one instead and I'll get rid of this one um, because I don't need two copies. Simple as that. Maybe I will get through all of these in one video. Let's see. The next one was Dave Eggers' first, I think it was his first publication in a heartbreaking work of Staggering Genius, which is sort of an um, like a autobiography. Well, ba it says based on a true story. Um, and I have I bought this f from a like a market, and I think I got like 20 books for a dollar or maybe less money than that. And I haven't read it yet. And to be honest, I, I'm not that interested. Like, I I know Dave Vegas is really popular and has written heaps. I've never read any of his stuff. I've read, like, short articles and stuff that he's written and interviews with him and stuff. But, um, yeah, I have never read any of his full-length books. And I would like to one day, but I, to be honest, like, it just seems in that vein of American writers who write about themselves, like American male writers, and maybe I'm being unfair. Let me know if you love Dave Eggers and if I should read any of his other books. Um, I just have other stuff that I want to read more. Like, I'm just essentially not that interested in this one. Um, and I read the first few pages, and it was the type of thing I reckon I would have loved in my early 20s during my undergraduate degree when I was just learning about critical theory and, like, the self and subjectivity and stuff and I would have found it really cool and insightful but now I don't feel the need to read it so it's going um, the next one is say hello by Carly Finlay I actually loved this book I gave it four stars I think it's awesome um, but I probably won't read it again and if I do I'll just um, Probably refer to it online or at the library because there's actually a lot of information here that would be really useful probably to refer to again but I just would love someone else to read it so I'm not going to give this I'm not going to donate this to a secondhand store but I will probably give it to a friend um, like find someone who's interested because I just thought it was a, such a good book um, I just probably won't read it in its entirety again so there's that one I have talked about this before um, on my channel Carly Finlay is an Australian writer and blogger and she has a like a facial difference because she has a skin condition called ichthyosis and so this is a lot about her skin condition or, or the condition in general but also about ableism and how it's affected her life and how society maybe could change it's a really good book so I'd love for someone else to read it okay next I've got how to be a heroine by Samantha Ellis or what I've learned from reading too much and basically this is a book with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chapters, and each of them focus on her experience of reading about the heroine, a heroine in a novel. So the novels include Lace, Gone with the Wind, Wuthering Heights, The Bell Jar, What Katie Did, Anne of Green Gables, Ballet Shoes, and Pride and Prejudice. Now, a friend passed this on to me after she'd finished reading it many years ago, and I haven't got round to it. And the reason I haven't got round to it is because I haven't actually read all those novels, and I didn't want to read this book that was talking about the heroines of the novels if I didn't know anything about those heroines. Well, I, knew, I mean, I know some of them, but I don't know all of them. And I still haven't read them all, read all of these novels. So yeah, I just don't need to have it lying around. I guess it's not urgent for me to read this one. And again, if I do feel the need, I can get it from the library. So yeah, 
So that one's going, hopefully someone else will really enjoy it. Um, the next one is uh, like an anthology, the best American non-required reading, edited by Dave Eggers. So there's actually a lot of cool writers in here, like Gary Steingart, who's one of my favorites, Sloane Crosley, who's an American essayist, a young woman. She's um, really funny. Anthony Doerr, Neil Gaiman. There's actually a lot of cool people in here, but I just, I've started reading this a bunch of times and I never really got into it. It's from 2011. Like, I just don't, there are so many anthologies like this around and so much stuff online that I just feel like I don't need to have it, considering I've already had it for eight years and haven't read the whole thing. So it's a cool book, but it's got to go. The next one is The Great American Novel by Philip Roth. I have never read any Philip Roth, despite the fact I <laughs> teach and study American literature. So I should read some of him one day, but I don't like feel the need to own any of his books. I got this from a secondhand store when I lived in Scotland eight years ago. Brought all the way back to Australia and still haven't read it. So yeah, I think this has got to go. I'm just not that in the same way with Dave Eggers. I don't think Dave Eggers is like Philip Roth, but I'm not particularly interested in reading Philip Roth right now until there's a need for me there to read it, like for uni or teaching or something. I will pass and someone else can read it or it can sit languishing on a shelf somewhere. Who knows? The next one is Catching Fire. Well, it's just this edition of Catching Fire because when I bought The Hunger Games, whenever it came out, they had, they didn't all, the bookstore didn't have matching editions. So my versions of The Hunger Games and Mockingjay matched, but Catching Fire didn't and it always bugged me. But then my friend was giving away a bunch of books and one of them was her set of the Hunger Games that was in the um, editions that I had the other two in. So I took Catching Fire, so now I have a matching set of my own. It's so lame. And I'm giving away my non-matching set. The next two are also like young adult dystopian. They are Samantha Shannon's first two novels from, what's the name of the series? Like I don't even know what the series is called. The first one was really cool. This is a proof copy because I from many years ago, um, 2013 in fact. This was cool, it was like a dystopian um, fantasy sort of novel set in kind of this steampunk Victorian-esque London of the future. And um, the main girl gets kidnapped by this other race or species, I'm not quite, can't quite remember. Anyway, it was kind of cool and she, figures out some cool mystery stuff and has an adventure. Um, and then I got the second one and I've never read it, but I have heard really bad reviews. So this is supposed to be a seven part series. And I think I started reading this and couldn't get into it because I couldn't remember what happened in this. But then a friend of mine told me, she was like, book two is not very good. And I've never really felt the urge to go back and read them. So I'm gonna give them away. And it was a shame because the first one was fun. It did have some weird gender politics though. Um, about the main character, this is kind of, well, it's kind of a spoiler, like falling in love with one of her captors who is actually really abusive to her initially. So that kind of disturbs me considering it's in a young person's book. So they're going. What else have I got here? I've got The Shepherd's Life by James Rebanks. Just wasn't into it. I read half of it, didn't like, I loved the content, which is his a tale of the Lake District. He's a from like a generational uh, family of shepherds, and he talks about the dogs and sh like the landscape and how to look after the sheep and how it works, passing it down through the family. Which all that stuff was really interesting. Sorry, it's quite glary. I'm trying to beautiful cover too, which is the main reason I bought it. Um, this is yeah. I just didn't like the writing style, which was. I found quite poorly edited and repetitive, like there were sort of whole paragraphs that were repeated. And also the tone, I didn't love it. So anyway, I'm gonna give it away. I kept it for ages because it's just such a beautiful cover, but realistically, I will never read this again. The next one is The Lucky Galah by Tracy Sorensen. I read this last year because it was nominated for, shortlisted for the Readings Prize for Fiction. So it's in my videos from when I was wrapping up that shortlist. Um, I, this novel was fine, I just didn't love it. I'm not gonna read it again, so 
I'm going to give it away. It's about, it's narrated by a galah, which is a native Australian bird that's pink and grey, which I, is a really cool idea, but the story for me didn't um, take off. So yeah, that one's going. I'll link the video down below if you want more info about it. The next one is um, In the Presence of Horses by Barbara Dimmick. This is pretty old, like this came out in 1998. Not that old, but like, it's not a new release. I read this, like I was in, I was like 13 or 14 in 1998. So, um, but I was a big horse rider growing up. Well, I still love horses. I just don't ride like I did growing up. So I just read every, anything and everything about horses. And this was a book about horses. Um, but it's, it was fine. Like, I think I liked it at the time, but I, I'm not going to read it again. Um, basically it was just about a woman who's sort of like emotionally, um, broken and the horses are a healing presence, which is the story of many novels. And I probably loved this at the time, but I won't read it again. So it's going to the store. Um, the next ones are just like old editions that I picked up, like Thomas Kinley, Three Cheers for the Paraclete and Henry, jo like very different, completely different novels, Australian, like 20th century, uh, American, 19th century. Um, Henry James Europeans actually really like Henry James and would really love to read more Thomas Kinley, but these, I just picked these up really cheap at a market sale and I'm like, I just have so many books. I'll get nicer editions or get them from the library whenever I really want to read them because I've had them lying around for so long and they have not been um, read yet. So they're going. So the next one is Tenzi Farlow and the Home for Mislaid Children, which is a kid's book, which I picked up for 30 cents from a secondhand shop near my house. And I read the first couple of chapters and I just wasn't that into it. Like normally I love middle grade fiction as anyone who watches this channel regularly will know. But yeah, I wasn't feeling the vibe and I've got so much other middle grade stuff that I'm desperate to read. So I'm just going to give this one away because I don't think I will get to it anytime soon. And they got one more, which is Scars Beneath the Skin by AJ Duggan. I might actually read this before I give it away. I'm not, probably not. I bought this years ago. I ordered it online, direct from the author, and it's because it's set in Berlin and I lived in Berlin for a while, like 10 years ago. So I was read or longer, 12 years ago. I was reading um, a lot of books about Berlin after I got back because I was really sad to have left. Um, but I'm just, I haven't read it, like I've had it for so long, I haven't read it. It's about a guy who, is an empty shell until he meets an impulsive and life-affirming Italian woman and I think she helps him out of some trauma that he's been through I don't know it just didn't sound that great to me but hopefully someone else will find enjoyment in it so that's all the books I'm gonna be unhauling and have freed up enough space on my shelf that I could fit most of my new books on there we had to find some space on some other shelves around the place but we found homes for all um, books somewhere in the house thanks to those ones going so if you've read any of them and think I should keep them let me know and I will or at least I'll think about it which is probably means I'll just sit around for another few years but you never know maybe I'll get around to reading them all right thanks guys bye